much for the incredible and warm welcome. And I want to know, are you all ready to elect Kamala Harris as the next President of the United States? Thank you. My name is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I am from the Bronx, New York. And I am so happy. There we go. Go Yankees. We got the game coming on. Sorry, I know we got some Dodgers fans. I just, I had to get it in. Um, thank you all so much for welcoming me tonight. And it's incredibly special and deeply meaningful to be able to spend this evening with you all here in Wisconsin and in Madison, especially at such an important precipice and moment for us as a country, because we are about to experience an enormous and momentous event when those polls and those results come in. And we are here tonight because we want to ensure that those results mean that Kamala Harris will be the next president of the United States. Now, um, we know, of course, many of us have heard some of what had happened uh, at the Madison Square Garden rally. And um, that was right in my hometown of New York. We just came there from there this morning and flew in today. And I want us to really talk about what happened there and what that experience is. Because the logic of someone like the Trump campaign and someone like Donald Trump is to try to isolate that, try to isolate that incident. When, first of all, they knew exactly what they were doing. Let's dispense with this idea of it's just a joke, or this was someone else, or this was just a comedian. We all saw there were two teleprompters right there on both sides of that screen. They were loaded with words. And it wasn't just about the fact that Donald Trump rallied tens of thousands of people, of Americans, to rally and froth behind words like calling Puerto Rico a floating pile of garbage. saying absolutely horrific things about Latino Americans, saying horrific things about women that he has said, about how he moves on them and how he touches them and how what he's been convicted or rather what he's been found liable for in a court of law. But the reason they do this is because they are preying on us not seeing ourselves in each other. They want us to think that they're not talking about, he's not talking about me. He's talking about some other. It's the same kind of logic that says a Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx has no business connecting with a community in Madison, Wisconsin. But I have a message for individuals that operate on that logic that the identity of our country is so much deeper than the division they seek to stoke between us. Every day when I walk into our nation's capital and I step foot on the floor of the United States House of Representatives alongside your incredible Congressman Mark Pocan. We walk through those hollowed doors and see emblazoned on the people, on the floor of the people's house, one phrase, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. They want us to think that it's the other way around, that there is many and there is no one, there's no unity in this country. Because if we do not see that ourselves and others, then they can divide us so that they can sell our country for parts to the highest bidder and the billionaire that wants to buy us out. And we're not going to let them do that. We're not going to let them do that. We cannot let them do that. And so when we hear an individual, like whether it's Donald Trump or one of his cronies on a stage, talking about 
our fellow Americans as a pile of garbage know that he's talking about us. He's talking about you. When he calls our, our service members and our veterans suckers and losers, he is talking about us. He's talking about you. When he talks um, on, on how he moved on young women like they were a, a B word, he's talking about all of us. All of us. When, when he pursues that, and it's very important for us to understand that, that racism is not a, a name or an insult. It is a descriptor of a belief system. It's a descriptor of a belief system. And Donald Trump believes that Americans are not created equal. He believes, and the people that he puts in power, like Stephen Miller, believes, they believe that US citizens are not created equal. So when they go on a stage and echo the words of Adolf Hitler, this is real life, this is real life. When he goes up on a stage and the people that he wants to appoint as leadership heads in administration and they echo the words of Adolf Hitler in America for Americans, no, he's not talking about US citizens. He's talking about who he believes is loyal enough to Donald Trump, and that's who he con considers an American. We cannot let this happen to our country. We must defend our nation. And that is what we do when we knock on our neighbor's door. Because the way that we defend our nation is by seeing ourselves in others, in understanding that he is not exempting us when he talks about the way he talks about undocumented people, or the way he talks about the poor, or the way he talks about people who live in cities or in suburbs or women or LGBT people. He is talking about us. When he talks about trans people, he's talking about us. When, he's, when he, he uses these descriptors as make, trying to make us believe that, oh, that's not me he's talking about, it is you he's talking about. It's everyone less than him that he's talking about. It's Americans that he's talking about. It's our Constitution that he's trampling and tearing up. It's our Bill of Rights that he is disrespecting. It is the foundation of America that is under attack. And the way that we do it is by, and the way by we overcome that is by coming together. It's by coming together. But I don't mean to say that in a superficial sense about how we come together. This isn't just about coming around a campfire. This is about coming together for an affirmative vision for the future of the United States of America. It's about the vision and what we want to come together for, not just what we are seek to oppose and what we're against. And, and what I think is so important here is that we understand that Kamala Harris does have a vision for the future of this country. Where someone like Donald Trump, all, the, all he has to say about places like, like Puerto Rico is that they're just floating piles of garbage. She came in the same day and had a plan to prevent the displacement of young doctors and teachers from leaving the island and getting priced out in their housing. When he calls, when he calls our service members suckers and losers, you know what Democrats do? We, we, we pass laws to help people affected by burn pits and our veterans affected by burn pits and diseases to cover them and protect them in their time here at home. When he wants to blame immigrants for the housing crisis, she wants to tackle the folks who are trying to gobble up our housing supply and drive up rents and mortgages. Donald Trump 
when he wants to go out and seek to divide us and pretend like there's nothing left in the coffers for Medicare and Social Security, Kamala Harris comes out and says, we're going to improve Medicare. We're going to expand health care. We're going to lower prescription drug prices for every American. So this idea that Donald Trump is somehow better, th better for the economy, let me tell you who he's better on the economy for. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, billionaires. If you're a billionaire, Donald Trump has a better economic plan for you. But if you're not a billionaire, Kamala Harris is your nominee for President of the United States. Period. You don't need to be, we don't have to be divided between rural and urban and suburban. If you're a New Yorker, if you're from Wisconsin, if you're from Nebraska, if you're from Texas, if you're white, if you're Latino, if you're black, Kamala Harris is the better nominee for President of the United States for you. And if you're a working class American, if you work for a living, and if you put honest, if you put food on the table through honest day-to-day -day work, a democratic trifecta will work to expand health care, codify Roe v. Wade, and ensure that every American has the right to choose. This is not close, Madison. This is not tight, Wisconsin. The polls are narrow, but the choice is clear. The choice is clear. But the polls are narrow because of a billionaire class that has taken over our media environment and has poisoned the well of American culture and, doesn't, and, and has done so much damage that people are afraid to even look at each other in the eye. We cannot allow that to be what becomes of us. I will not allow it, and I know you won't allow it either. I know you won't. I know you won't. But it's so critical and so important that we do that work. Six years ago, I was a waitress in downtown New York City. And I worked for cash tips every day. I'll never forget for the rest of my life how it felt at the end of a long double shift. My joints ached. One time I got on the train and I was so tired that I fell asleep. And when I woke up, all the cash that I had made in that day was gone. Devastating. It's devastating. You go home and you're not sure if the lights are gonna be on when you're struggling that hard. I came from a working family. My mom, cleaned houses growing up. I did my homework on other people's kitchen tables to get to school. We all come from the same kind of story and the same kind of background. When I was 16 years old, my dad, my parents had worked so hard to try to put together an American dream. And they had worked and scrapped and put everything together going from extreme poverty to being able to have a small home with two kids. And then all of a sudden, my dad was diagnosed with a very rare form of lung cancer, didn't even smoke. And from there, we lost almost everything, almost everything. And so a lot of times when Republicans try to make fun of me for being a waitress, they don't know why I became a waitress. It was to help my parents, and to help, rather to help my mom after my dad had eventually passed away from cancer, make ends meet. They are constantly trying to make lives harder for everyday Americans. And we have to make life better. That's all this is about. That's all this is about. That's it. But once again, this race is tighter than it ever should be. I know a lot of us look at these polls and we cannot believe that the race is this tight. It's almost like we're in different realities. And this is something that we're going to have to contend with and heal for a long time to come. That challenge is not going away. It's something that we're going to have to figure out. But between now 
and November 5th, we need to mobilize every single person we, ha we can to make sure that we get to the polls. And I often say, I've been all across the country, I've been to Pennsylvania. This is my second time here in Madison. We've been to Austin, Texas. We've been to Nevada. We've been all over the country. And the one thing that I say is that people constantly talk about who a swing voter is. But a swing voter is not just from red to blue. This is what we say. It's from couch to booth. It's from couch to booth. And our job is to persuade as many people to go from couch to booth. And the way that we do that is by seeing them. It's by seeing them and identifying with them and understanding that it does not matter how different a walk of life another, per, another Americans may seem, I guarantee there's something in common that we can find, common ground and the way to bridge that divide. So Madison, I know that we can do this. I'm here because I know that we can do this. And y'all are welcome to New York anytime. But we must get this done. It is go time, it is serious, and we will prevail. Because I do believe in e pluribus unum, out of many one. So I thank you all very much. Have a beautiful night.